Two of Ontario's four main party leaders have been bumped off the campaign trail by COVID-19. NDP leader Andrea Horvath announced that she tested positive for the virus this morning. That's after Green Party leader Mike Schreiner said last night that he tested positive. They're both now campaigning remotely as they isolate in line with public health guidelines. PC leader Doug Ford and Liberal leader Stephen Del Duca both say they've tested negative. Joining us live tonight on our political panel, John Capobianco, senior VP and senior partner at Fleischmann Hillard High Road, Kim Wright, principal and founder of Wright Strategies, and Brian Detchu, consultant at Crestview Strategies. So, Kim, I want to start with you. This is quite a curveball. How do you see it changing the strategy for the two leaders in particular who are now isolating? Yeah, and Andrea Horvath has actually been running a full leaders campaign, a full leaders tour, and she was about to go through a, a northern Ontario swing. So is it problematic? Yep. Is it the end of the world? Probably would have been a couple of years ago, uh, but we've all learned how to have precautions on top of precautions and, and you know, not to quote friends, but we all learned how to pivot. Uh, so, look, it, it, uh, it is unfortunate. You saw earlier today she was still taking media interviews. Uh, she was at an event in, uh, in Sault Ste. Marie, although they just, you know, rolled her in uh, on the video screen. Uh, so it's, it's strange times. We've all had to make adjustments. Uh, but the most important thing between now and the next, uh, you know, till June 2nd is people are now casting ballots. Uh, the campaigns are really focused on get out the vote strategies. And Andrea is still there talking to Ontarians. She is on Zoom calls with campaigns. She is uh, lighting up the phone lines to supporters uh, and really doing what she does best, which is talking to people where they're at. And as you mentioned, of course, advanced polling is open. And yes, we've all had to pivot. We've all, of course, as you can see on our TV screen, become very familiar with Zoom and mm -hmm. FaceTime. So, John, do you see all of this at all affecting voters' attitudes? Affordability has emerged as the hot topic this campaign with two leaders going down with COVID. Do you think pandemic issues might move back up the list of priorities for voters? Well, it certainly became an issue, and it's unfortunate that both uh, Ms. Horvath and, and Mr. Schreiner got, got COVID. Obviously, the fact that they've been fully boosted and, and, uh, and had all their shots and, and took his precautions as much as they could over the course of the last number of years probably gave them sort of the mild symptoms and the fact that they can still speak to voters. I think a lot of the, a lot of the campaigns would have taken some precaution, knowing that this could be a situation. And I remember the federal election campaign that happened in the middle of, of COVID, the pandemic, when Aaron O'Toole, his, his campaign, campaign team actually had uh, a media studio just for that reason. In, in the event that something happened, he was able to kind of communicate with voters. So I, I'm sure that what you're seeing with Andrew Horvath and with Mike Schreiner is that they're going to be probably hold, homed at, uh, hold up at, at their various locations for the last little while. But as far as the issue of the pandemic, um, you know, I think Ontarians, much like many, many Canadians, are just tired of it. I think they understand that it's going to be there. There's a new variant that's coming around. There's all sorts of things. But I think the vast majority of Ontarians are vaccinated or boost, are fully boosted. Uh, there's fourth shots that are going around now, as many many Ontarians are trying to get that as possible. Uh, people are wearing masks where they can, uh, especially in public settings. So I think they want to move on to that and talk about what's, what's affecting their, their pocketbook issues, which is gas prices and grocery store prices. And that's, what I think, what, what this campaign is going to be about. So, Brian, one of the conversations today in the Liberal and PC camps reacting to this news, of course, also testing themselves and many of their staff members, how do they then capitalize on two other leaders being at home? Well, well, first I would say no, no one in the Liberal camp was hoping that uh, anyone on uh, a rival campaign would catch COVID. You know, it's very unfortunate. It's, it's terrible luck. Uh, to John's point, uh, many of us were, were done with COVID, uh, but uh, I guess COVID isn't done with us. And two out of the four uh, leaders testing positive in the last 24 hours, uh, not too long after a debate in a rather, uh, what we might say now was uh, quite a small room, is a, is a reminder of that. Uh, but you know, all the leaders were following protocols, continue to follow protocol, Del, Del Duca included, uh, with uh, frequent testing. Uh, they were all tested this morning uh, in, in Del Duca's camp. And and tested negative, which allows them to continue their uh, in-person events. But you know, no one on the Liberal team uh, was was hoping for this. This is quite unfortunate, but it's the the realities of campaigning in the in the COVID era. 
course, health and safety for all the candidates and their staff is the top priority for everyone. Kim Nanos polling for CP24 and CTV shows NDP support slipping. How do they turn that around now with two weeks to go as they kind of pivot their campaign? It really is going back to old school campaigning. And look, New Democrats love nothing more than a good old fashioned ground game, door to door, person to person. Uh, and what a gift almost in an election that it could charitably be called a little boring, at least in comparison to the what's happening in Alberta with the UCP or the conservative federal leadership. Uh, what your get out the vote strategy is and getting those voters identified and into the ballot box is critical. And one of the things that Andrea Horvath and the New Democrats have really invested in uh, over the last couple of years has been in those ridings where we are going toe to toe with conservatives, because that's who our real enemy is here, uh, enemy in the pejorative sense. Uh, but our real uh, focus has been is places like uh, Etobicoke Lakeshore, places like Cambridge, uh, which uh, the current MP, uh, MPP left the Conservative Party to her and her husband started their own new blue party, which is running a full slate of candidates. We're also looking at places like Ottawa, West Nepean, which is Lisa McLeod's riding. Uh, and we're really quite focused on all of those uh, those key areas. Yeah, of course, the leaders do not make up the entire campaign. There's candidates and candidates have their own staff. So a lot of door knocking can still be done. John, same polling shows the PC holding steady with the lead. What's the strategy to keep it that way? The old sports cliche is sometimes, you know, it's hard to stay at the top. Well, and I've said this before, where, where you know, polls are a snapshot in time and, and no one takes them for granted, and certainly not Doug Ford and the PCs who are working hard right to the very end. And Kim uh, mentioned my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore, and I'll tell you, my local candidate, Christine Hogarth, is working extremely hard and, and I look forward to having her reelected in, uh, on, on June the 2nd. But, you know, I think this is the, the, the sort of the the last milestone, if you will, of, of a campaign. There's a couple of milestones that you have every campaign. One is the launch, two are the debates, three is advanced polls, which really does lead into the final stretch of, of the campaign, which is two weeks today. And I think a lot of the campaigns are going to be working on their get out to vote, as, as Kim said. Uh, and, and I think the Conservatives are going to just keep playing their, 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 uh, their strategy, which is get out there, talk to people. Doug Ford speaks to, uh, to issues that, are, that matter to Ontarians, especially when it comes to pocketbook issues and cost of living issues um, and a lot of the a lot of the issues coming out of the, the debate I think really gave some wind in his sails um, especially because we saw some polls where a lot of Ontarians who did watch the debate saw that he had he had won the debate or at least came across as the most premier like person in that uh, in that debate and that follows with some of the some of the union trade unions that are getting his support which is why I think the NDP are not doing so well uh, because really the fight was the second pace, place between the NDP and the Liberals, and they fall into the third place now. But there's still a lot of time, and the campaigns matter, and every day uh, in a, an election campaign could be, uh, can be a week or a, long, a month's worth of, uh, of, uh, of time. So, Brian, on the same token, what do the Liberals need to do to chip away at the PC lead with two weeks left until Election Day? You know, over the last few weeks, the Liberals have done a great job uh, in terms of identifying their voters and energizing their voters. Uh, but the last step is to mobilize their voters. Uh, we all know that elections are won and lost on Election Day. Uh, all these events that these politicians hold, all these fundraisers, uh, all these social media posts that get traction, that get retweets, that get likes, you know, they're all, they're all fantastic. Getting people to attend your events is great. Getting people to donate to your party is amazing. But at the end of the day, it's our votes that elect governments and not our retweets. Uh, so for the, the Liberals, uh, it will be about making sure that the people that they've reached out to in, in the different ways that they have uh, go out to vote. Uh, we know that elections with lower voter turnouts are usually good for incumbent governments. Uh, the polls seem to suggest that this won't be a change election, uh, but for, for the Liberals, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's their responsibility to uh, make sure that as many people go out to the polls as possible uh, so that we do see a turnout that is comparable to what we saw in, in 2018, which was a 20-year record high. Uh, so for the Liberals, it's to make sure that to keep on knocking on doors and to make sure that everyone that they've reached out to and people that they may have not 
not already reached out to uh, go up, go out and talk to the polls. And, and certainly the Liberals have an additional challenge. You know, every media outlet and pollster is reporting that Stephen Del Duca is not likely to reclaim his seat. Viewers will remember he lost that seat to Minister Tabolo in 2018. Uh, and there is nothing I am seeing that is indicating a, a resurgence of Stephen Del Duca to the legislature. So, you know, he made some crack, a, a lame knockoff of Jack Layton's uh, commentary about showing up to work and being rewarded. Uh, Stephen Del Duca still doesn't have a house and a seat in the House and not likely to have it. So I think Liberals are asking themselves, and certainly I'm hearing from Liberals, they're already uh, talking about the next leadership uh, right after Election Day if Stephen doesn't win that seat. All right, two weeks till Election Day. We have to leave it there tonight. John Capobianco, Kim Wright, and Brian Detchew, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having us. Thank, Thank you. you.